Mauricio Herrera, good fight. A lot of people are not talking about this fight. I don't know why this is a good fight. Um, it is, it's even a 50-50 fight to me. Um, I don't know why no one's talking about this fight. You know, honestly, I, I just don't. You know, a lot of people still stuck on the Pacquiao stuff, man. And this is a good fight. This is a good fight. Uh, both of these guys are on the same boat. Like, I feel both of these fighters really, really need to win this fight. Okay, both of these guys have been somewhat on a loser streak when it comes to their biggest fights. Okay, whether or not you think they won. You know, Hank Lundy just had a close fight with Tomas Delorme. Um, a fight that, if it was 12 rounds, I think Hank Lundy might have won that that fight. You know, I know Hank Lundy got dropped. Um, and Tomas Delorme won, like, the first five rounds. Then Hank Lundy run, won, like, rounds 6 to 10. You know, so it was a pretty easy fight to score. Obviously, because Delorme had the knockdown um that actually won him the fight okay but i believe that fight was a split decision i think if it went 12 rounds hang lundy would have won that fight because delorme looked gas halfway through the fight and hang lundy put on pressure on him very close fight then you have mauricio herrera i mean we all know his story at this point he beats danny garcia doesn't get the credit for it okay and then um he fought jose benavidez another star that's on a rise that um, this is probably one of the first fights that Golden Boy and Top Rank had, and this was on HBO, and Mauricio Herrera lost a fight, he lost a decision, that's another fight that I thought he was robbed for, okay, uh, both of these guys are kind of on the same boat, you know, they're both really good fighters, um, in the division, you know, they're both arguably at 140, well, Hank Lundy fights at 135 a lot, but, you know, if, if I were to rank him at 140, I would definitely put him, like, in the top 15, you know, even, you know, maybe, maybe the top 10 might be pushing it, but more, top 15, definitely. But they seem to always lose a lot of their big fights, all right? Um, so anyway, let's talk about the fight. Um, I do think it's a 50-50 fight. Both fighters have a good chance of winning. Uh, I think in order for Hank Lundy to win this fight, Mauricio Herrera is a guy that is, doesn't have a lot of punching power, okay? You can't look at the fact that he doesn't have a lot of knockouts because he backs a lot of fighters up, okay? He's done it to Danny Garcia. He's done it to Jose Benavidez. You know, he, he even beat Ruslan Provoknikov, okay? I haven't watched that fight in a while, but he beat Ruslan Provoknikov. Um, he gave him his first loss, matter of fact. So, um, Mauricio Herrera is a good boxer, okay? He likes to, if you give him distance, if you give him enough space, it's very hard to beat this guy. This guy works off a jab. He throws a lot of jabs, okay? And he goes to the jab. He goes up and down. He's constantly changing levels. All right, great timing. All right, that's one thing about her. He has great timing, and he's constantly changing levels. He shoots the jab up top, goes low up top. He likes to shoot the jab down to the stomach, and he likes to just keep the distance between you and I mean, between him and um, his opponent, okay? Um, he likes to shoot the straight right as well. You know, he, he just pops a jab. Sometimes he comes over the, over the top with a big right hand. Um, but he likes to go to the body a lot too, okay? But he likes to do it from afar, all right? And he constantly does it, and he'll throw a big shot in there in the mix of his combinations every now and then. And that's how he usually wins his fights, all right? He has a good rhythm. Once he gets a good rhythm going, he can keep going. And if you're not aggressive enough against him, this is why he wins fights. So Hank Lundy, Hank Lundy, I've seen him fight two different ways. You know, he can box with you on the outside and he can be the aggressive. He can fight. He's very, very versatile. Okay. The only thing is he's very short. Okay. He doesn't have long arms. All right. So he's usually fighting both. Believe it or not, both of these guys are usually the smaller fighter between the two. Now, I don't know who's small. I think Hank Lundy might even still be shorter than Mauricio Herrera. Hank Lundy is very, very short, all right? But he's kind of stocky. But Hank is going to have to be aggressive. He has to fight at a high volume early because he can't get he can't get Herrera to get in some type of rhythm, okay? I see Herrera lost. When I seen him lost against um Mike, Mike Alvarado, okay? Mike Alvarado... 
was a bigger fighter, okay? He was a bigger puncher, and he did not give Herrera any space, okay? He smothered him. He didn't have any distance between him and Alvarado to pop that jab, okay? Um, the win rounds on points. He didn't have any space because Alvarado was all over him. He was smothering him. Hank Lundy is going to have to fight that fight. He can fight that fight. I mean, if you, if, even if you look at the fight between him and DeLorme, you will see that Hank Lundy was all over DeLorme that second half of the fight. So he could be an aggressive fighter. He's a good boxer, and he has great hand speed and everything. But he could fight a technical fight, but he has to fight aggressive with Herrera because Herrera is a high-volume fighter, okay? And he's pretty precise puncher. He lands, he throws a nothing but jabs. He doesn't throw that many power punches, but he racks up points round by round, okay? And, you know, this is not, her, Lundy is not no up-and-coming star. You know, I'm sure the judges is going to do the right thing because there's really no reason to give the advantage to either one of these fighters because most of these guys are not like no upcoming stars. They don't got no big fights coming up on the way or anything like that. And... I'm just going to assume that this should be an even fight when it comes to the judges. You know, there's no uh, Jose Benavidez, an up-and-coming guy or an uh, undefeated guy. And it's not like Danny Garcia's undefeated record fight in Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico or whatever. Um, so Herrera's going to have to stick to doing his thing. You know, keep the space, the distance between um, Hank Lundy. You know, even if he's winning, he have success with that early in a fight. I'm sure at some point... Hank Lundy is going to step up the pressure, okay, and start being more aggressive in the second half of the fight. Herrera has good lateral movement. He's going to have to keep circling. Hank Lundy trying to keep the fight in the middle of the, um, in the, middle of the ring, okay? Once he gets his, his back against the ropes, Hank Lundy is a stronger guy, bigger puncher. I expect Hank Lundy to start being more aggressive and taking over rounds with that. And the judges might like that because him being an aggressor, him trying to make the fight, Rounds might be given to Hank Lundy just based off that. Herrera is going to have to keep the distance between them and throw more power shots if he can, all right? He could scrap. Don't get don't get, don't get get it twisted. Herrera can definitely scrap. We saw that in the Danny Garcia fight. But he has to still control the ring, be the ring general in there, you know, fight the fight at his pace instead of Hank Lundy's, where I really feel like Hank Lundy just because even though he's a good boxer, he's not going to out-jab. He's not going to outwork Mauricio Herrera on the outside because Herrera, that's all he does, okay? That's all he does is throw jabs and shoots jabs right straight to the stomach, and he never misses with those, okay? So Hank Lundy is definitely going to have to be aggressive. I think Hank Lundy is going to win if Hank Lundy starts off early, all right, and keeps going at the same pace throughout the fight. If he lets Herrera get too many of those early rounds and he tries to play catch up later, then he'll have a good chance of losing a fight. I think Hank Lundy is going to win this fight, okay? I think he's going to do better than Danny Garcia did against him, than Jose Benavidez, another fighter that should have been pressuring Herrera. I think Hank Lundy is going to get the job done, but... I still think it's 50-50 because Hank Lundy, sometimes he doesn't show up, you know. Sometimes he just doesn't do enough to win fights, okay. Um, Mauricio Herrera is 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 pretty consistent in his fights. It's just that in the eye of the judges, he just doesn't do enough, okay. So I think it's 50-50 in that sense. I think it's definitely going to the decision, all right. Um, if anybody gets dropped, it'll be Herrera. Uh, if, if anyone gets stopped, it'll be Herrera. But I think it's going to definitely go to decision. And I think Hank Lundy is going to win this fight just being more physical, more aggressive in this fight, okay? Um, but I feel like this fight is definitely a must win for both of these fighters because both of these fighters have been losing so many fights. Um, but they're still top fighters at 135, 140. It's just that they've been losing so many of their bigger fights. You know, Hank Lundy to Ray Beltran, to John Molina, um, to Dom Thomas De Delorme. I think it's a couple other fights he lost too, and Herrera. It's a long list of guys that he's lost to, um, but that's how I feel. I think it's a good fight. I don't know why no one's talking about it. It's definitely a good fight. It's an even fight as well, and um, I don't know when the fight is taking place. I, I got I definitely got to check up on that. I think it might be in July, it might be late June, early July, but um, it's a good fight. Definitely a good fight. So make sure you check it out.
All right, take care.